This is a quick style history of Southgate. So, assuming you already know the part of LA history where the indigenous people were swindled out of the only place they've known for countless generations, the story of Southgate begins with Francisco Lugo as some big shot soldier for Spain. He must be good at wholesale land theft because the Spanish king says he can go ahead and take possession of 11 square miles and Lugo names his land Rancho San Antonio. When Lugo gets old, he splits land up among his kids. Europeans love doing this. It's basically the plot of every other Shakespeare play. Anyways, Lugo's kids split up the land with their kids and so on and so on until eventually one of them is left with a little chunk that we all call Southgate. Later, R.D. Tweedy and family show up with an ox cart and dreams of setting up a business area with a gym and a brewery and a dentist just for kids and a couple 99 cent stores and maybe a boyo loco. On January 20th, 1923, 2,500 residents officially become the city of Southgate and soon after this becomes the birthplace of one Glenn Seaborg. This little brainiac goes on to discover a number of elements on the periodic table including Californium, New Yorkium, Texasum, and any other stadium have yet to post up. He also discovers Seaborgium which marks the first time a scientist was badass enough to name an element after themselves. Southgate goes through a business boom when companies like Firestone and General Motors drop factories right in the middle of their blue collar American dream. For a while, lawns are green, Freemasons shake hands vigorously, and everyone goes to church on Sundays. Unfortunately, there's too many black people hanging around for Southgate's comfort, so they get the band back together and form the white supremacist gang, the Spook Hunters. This social club likes to spend its free time using violence against local blacks. Many of the founding members of local black gangs have gone on record to say their formation was a direct reaction to the Spook Hunters. In the 1980s, the gates in Southgate opened wide as honkies scatter from the scourge of non-honkies. In the 1990s, voters worry that Walmart is going to impact their local businesses, and then in the 2000s, worry that online business is going to impact their local Walmart. Now in 2022, like many parts of LA County, the edges of Southgate's borders have become less and less distinct.